Hello everybody, how's it going today? My name is Connor, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be going over how I kind of started working on a 3D renderer software, basic 3D renderer for my uh, little game engine project. Um, as you can see, it's coming along pretty well. Uh, I got the spinning cube here that I'm able to show off to you guys this time. So uh, yeah, we're going to go over what, how, I, how I was able to implement that and get that working. So um let's see first things first uh yeah so it, it only does these you know lines you know it can it can only render lines right now but it is using a uh full 3d coordinate system uh using you know transforms and matrices and um you simulate a camera and all that so it's 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 got the basics of what a 3d renderer should have right so um yeah so i'm gonna close that for now we're gonna kind of go over uh what went into something like this so um in the last video i talked about how okay this get thing is really annoying um sorry in the last video i talked about how uh, i created my entity component system uh kind of design feature of my game engine and now and I alluded to next I was going to work on the um the 3D renderer that I was gonna try to create from scratch using just a frame buffer and math and that's exactly what I've done basically. Uh so if we go into the app uh which is kinda like the holding kind of what holds the main you know stuff of the game engine it's just used from main to to access the game engine itself. Um, we can see that we have a few different things that we have added to this. Uh, I don't think I went over this last time, but basically before we had, uh, the easiest world and that was the main focus point of the last video. Um, and then we had all this stuff and, uh, which is just, you know, the window and the event loop and the input handler and all that. And then we have this frame buffer. And the frame buffer is the first thing that we kind of need in order to get a 3D renderer working is we need a way to actually draw to a window or draw to the screen in some kind of way. So I'm using a crate called Pixels for that. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. I'll actually leave a link to all the crates I'm using down in the description. It's, it's, it, Rust ecosystem is just fantastic once again uh, for having like little modular things that you can work with and have them all kind of played nicely together and all plug together all nicely. And it's just really nice. Anyway. Uh, Pixels is one that I've used before for previous projects, such as my uh, Ray Tracer. Um, and uh, it's just a really like simple, easy to use, or it used to be pretty simple. It's actually gone pretty feature complete now. Um, but it just gives me access to, uh, all I need is just a mutable slice of pixels on the screen, and that's all I need. So that's what Pixels gives me, basically. So, um, and then, uh, obviously, when the next thing that you need, other than a uh, frame buffer, is you're going to need a 3D world with stuff in it. So that's where the ECS comes in from last video. Uh, I was able to, if we go over to main, um, I can actually just create components, like a mesh component for an entity, and add uh, vertices to it. Uh, add points to that uh, mesh, and... Uh, I can then add a transform component here. Um, come on, doc. Um, yeah, I can add a transform component here and add things like position, rotation, and scale fields to it, which are just vec threes. Um, by the way, for three D math, I decided to cheat a little bit and use Glam. Uh, Glam is a come on. Uh, it's a you know it's a linear algebra library for games and graphics. It supports all the things you need in order to do. Um, in order to do, you know, 3D math for a game or something for a renderer, uh, it's very, very useful. So I figured I would use something like that. See myself a headache of writing matrix, matrix multiplications by hand, which I've done before and they're not fun to debug. So, and also very slow when you do it by hand. I'd rather just use, you know, the, the vectorization and, you know, SIMD and all that with a pre-made library. Because I don't know how to do all that stuff in Rust myself, so that's why I'm using Glam. 
but besides the point, uh, I have transformations, uh, position, rotation, scale transformations for all the 3D entities in my world, and they're just in their own component. That's just a transform component. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So, uh, yeah, where was I? And then I just add these components to the entities, and now I have a system. I can use the system to uh, update these transforms in real time. Um, so, and I can add queries to the systems. Sorry, I'm scrolling around a lot, but uh, I can have a timer query, which is, I now have a way to keep track of time in my uh, game engine. And then I can modify any transforms that I see with a mutable query like that. So, uh, either way. So, yeah, uh, and this, this test system up here is what's, what's making this cube spin. I'm just querying the um, transforms, and if they match what I'm trying to get them to match, then I just uh, add to their rotation component uh, a certain amount. That's what's making the cube spin in real time. So, uh, anyway, besides the point, so we have our... Uh, what was it? it we, yeah, we have our uh, ACS world with stuff in it. We have our frame buffer to draw to, but now actually we need something else in order to actually get these this ECS world coordinates uh, into screen coordinates that we can draw on the frame buffer. It's kind of kind of like some glue, the mathematical glue, in order to get you know if there's a, a you know point at you know one negative one two you know x y z. Um, how do we draw that on the screen? Like, what x y coordinate on the screen does that correspond to? So we actually need what what, what we what, um I'm I'm referring to as like a simulated camera. So um we have a perspective camera struct here, uh and this is allowing us to um to transform those world space coordinates uh into screen space coordinates. And if you don't know terminology of like world space, screen space, view space. That's totally fine. It's it's kind of something that took me a while to wrap my head around. Um, it uh, basically think of it like uh, here. I wonder if I can pull up like a paint. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up paint for you guys. It's been a while since I pulled up paint for you guys, right? So, uh, see, we have our three D axes, right? So this is uh, plus y. This is plus Z, this is plus X, right? So we have our 3D world space coordinates. And so we have something like a like a little triangle here at, let's use a different color, oops. Different color here, triangle at, um, let's say it's at like, X is gonna be like one, uh, Z is gonna be one, and Y is going to be at like, let's call it like two. It doesn't look like it's at two, but either way, you know what I mean, right? Or no, sorry, that's 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 Y, two, one, right? So that's this this little triangle's location. And now, say we have a camera that's like uh, looking at this scene, right? And so we have our camera here. It's going to be our camera. Um, and our camera sees the world from a certain perspective, right? Like it's looking over here and like from the POV of the camera, you can imagine yourself like looking at a camera and like at the scene, where would this triangle end up on the camera's lens, right? Where would this camera, where would the, where would the light from the triangle end up on the camera's lens and we're on the on the virtual screen if we were taking a picture of the scene where would that end up on the final image so that's what we're trying to figure out here and it's a very kind of weird complicated matrix math to figure that out uh i'll spare you the details because this is more of a technical rundown than a technical overview than a, a deep dive on how 3d rendering works uh there are plenty of resources out there to figure out how that works that would explain it a lot better than i ever could so if you want to look that up, then you can. I try to remember to read some, leave some resources down in the description uh, for what I've been using for reference. Um, but either way, 
uh, this is kind of like what we're, the, the mathematical problem that we're trying to solve, the algebraic problem that we're trying to solve is, you know, say like if we're on on the camera screen, you know, um, like this is the screen, right? So where would this triangle end up? It would be a point up like somewhere like right here, right? So um, basically, we're trying to figure out is like how we turn this 3D simulated world into actually something we can see, right? That's the process of rasterization and, and rendering in general. So, um, yeah, anyway, that's kind of a tangent, but, um, so what we're doing in, uh, and, and the point of the camera is that it, it contains our view and projection matrices. So the view matrix is just where the camera is located basically. So like, wh what are we trying to transform our points in the world relative to the camera? How are we trying to transform that? Um, and then the projection matrix is how we transform the view coordinates, like where are things relative to the camera, and we try to, uh, and, and, and the projection matrix is how we get that into screen space, into pixels on the screen, right? So it's tr how we're trying to get something from in the world to relative to the camera to relative to the screen itself, right? Pixels on the screen. So... It's kind of, that's kind of the pipeline that we're looking at here, right? So, um, hopefully I explained that all right. <laughs> um, either way, so, yeah, and we're using perspective projection, right-hand perspective projection, which is just a term that you can look up if you want to find out more about this kind of thing. Just, yeah, it, lots of sine, cosine, divide, you know, making a matrix out of things. It's just, yeah, anyway. It's a lot. It's a lot of math that's kind of even over my head. So, uh, but it's fine. <clears throat> Either way, uh, let's take a look at what's actually happening in the render main render uh, function. Uh, so for now, I'm not using a, a, a struct to hold all the rendering information. I'm just kind of passing it in, you know. Um, which might change in the future. I might end up using some kind of internal state for the renderer, but until then, it's just a function, it's a public function, global thing. Um, so first things first is we, the renderer it expects us to take, to, to give it a frame of pixels, basically. Um, uh, uh, just a, a list of pixels, a list of pixels that we can write to. This is like equivalent of like a frame buffer pointer, in like C or something. Um, we give it our camera so we can access its transforms. We give it our ECS world, the entire world, because we need to query it. Uh, this isn't its own system because this is not how it works right now. <laughs> uh, it's kind of hacky. It's kind of messy, but you know it is what it is. And we get a screen size as well. So uh, I might end up putting this back in the screen size parameter into the camera itself, but we'll we'll see. So um, first things first, we query the it's just world for the meshes and the transforms and stuff we need to draw and how we're going to draw it basically. Uh, and then if those queries are successful, then we transform the meshes, transform the vertices and the meshes, and we keep track of the transformed ones um, in this transform messages, transformed meshes uh, map here. Uh, let's see, we get those fields. And then once we have the, uh, come on, these, I hate these inline hints when I'm trying to make a video. Um, and we get the position, the rotation, the scale, and the actual, uh, vertex of, yeah, you know, the, the actual vertex position, or sorry, what am I saying? The vertex is relative position to the mesh itself, and then the meshes, uh, transform, uh, position, rotation, scale. Then we transform that vertex using that transform. And then we transform the vertex with our view projection matrices from the camera. And then we have our screen space coordinates, or sorry, yeah, something like that. We, we have our screen, basically our screen space coordinates. We're not, not entirely converted yet because we need to actually convert them into actual pixels, but um, we just keep, keep a list of our points we need to draw on the screen, basically. Make sense? And then once we have all of our points we need to draw on the screen, we just draw the points on the screen. And I have this line rendering function here. It's it was honestly generated by GitHub Copilot. 
<laughs> uh, it's just, you know, I, I'm pretty sure this is a common line drawing algorithm for 3D res rasterization. Um, but yeah, that's basically how that works. Uh, it's, it's really, you know, straightforward kind of. Uh, it, it, it looks hacky right now because my ETHDS, uh code is really messy and it needs, um, it needs some refactoring, but uh, yeah, this is a quick overview of how that renderer works. Um, now I want to talk about some, oh yeah, and then also in here I have, uh, you know, defining the vertices here. I think I already went over this actually. Yeah, vertices of a cube, triangles and making up a cube. Um, I had to add some new, uh, field types to my, uh, component fields, including the list field type, which is a list of, um, list of other fields. Just kind of how it worked out. Also got some glam types in here now. Um, so vector three, vector four, matrix three, matrix four. So um, anyway, so I want to talk about some limitations of this current implementation of my renderer. Now, obviously, first things first, it can only do solid lines, right? So um, hopefully soon I'll be able to do filled shapes and maybe even shading, you know, maybe like based on distance to the camera or something, not like actual light sources, but you know, something very, very simple. Uh, I'd like to start using uh, like an actual shader implementation as well, where I can get these shaders to, you know, maybe that makes me just make them like simple rest functions that define the, the, the color of a pixel. But either way, um, and then uh, another thing that's actually a limitation of this current implementation is that there's no actual real meshes in this. Like it looks like this list of list of vertices for a mesh, but I actually have to define each triangle using four points because what it does is it basically just, um, you know, it's like you're drawing and you're like not lifting up the pencil at all, right? You kind of have to go like this, right? Or it's like you're writing a cursive, you know? So it, you just kind of have to keep going like this and like backtracking and, you know, it, it's, it's just really weird. Uh, so I'm hoping to add like index lists and stuff or like supports for uh, actual mesh. You know, what do you find in an actual mesh file, like an OBJ file, uh, object file, we like you export from Blender. Hopefully I'll be able to import those and render those. That'd be really cool. I think that'd be pretty easy to do in what current invitation even, but um just need to add those indexes and index lists and stuff like that. Um, sorry, that is my phone. Um, I will let it go to voicemail. <laughs> Wasn't expecting a call. That was my pharmacy. I have to listen to that. Um, either way, what was I saying? Uh, this code is very hacky. It uh, it kind of needs to be cleaner. It, it's it's very kind of messing right now, but you know, like I said in the press video, I'm just going to start recording these videos and just kind of get them out there, pump them out while I'm working on the thing rather than actually like trying to finish something and then make a video about it. You know what I mean? So, uh, and also the final limitation that this probably has is that it's probably really slow. <laughs> like, uh, it's, it's probably just the slowest thing ever and it's not very efficient and I'm drawing the, the lines one pixel at a time and I could be using like GPU for that, but I, I specifically wanted this to be a software renderer because I, I like the challenge of writing something in software uh, on the CPU. That's something, especially something like rendering software, rendering code, you know? So anyway, that'll be about it for this video. Uh, this one's running a little longer, so I'll go ahead and stop there. Uh, thank you all very much for watching. If you uh, like my content, please leave a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. If you want to support me financially, then you can do a super thanks. Um, I'm pretty sure I have those enabled still. I know I, I stopped uploading for a while, so I might have turned those off, but I'll, make, I'll try to make sure that those are on. Um, and yeah, and if you have any questions, leave a comment. Any comments, leave a comment. <laughs> and I'll uh, see you on the next one. Thank you very much. Peace out.